for the question and answer and and that will be the picture where we have all the notes uh, for the email addresses and the web pages so the, those of you who wants to get more information you can copy or write down in your notebooks the uh, web page and all that and we also have picture of two two snowmen uh, on the on the picture this is two children that are that will be about teenagers by the time we we have internet in the future so here's the picture though So these are the two fellows to, to become Father Christmas when they become older. So as you see, the uh, uh, notes for the web pages, for the email addresses, and uh, whatnot. So I would like to open the floor for uh, questions, and I hope you guys have microphones and whatnot to give people who wants to put the questions. So welcome for questions. Anybody? Oh, we have one person there. India, working with Government of India as additional commission of customs. One of my job is to track the uh, uh, digital licensing, which I'm tracking. So on this background, I ask to, uh, I want to ask the uh, panel that your efforts, all these efforts, chapters efforts are focused only on major issues of internet development like infrastructure or content production or access or cost of access or the cut of reach of the internet or other issues like public dis disclosure norms or use of internet or terms of use or licensing controls or uh, privacy policies. Are we doing anything on those issues, that effort on those specific microscopic issues of internet development? Okay. One issue. Okay, let's Mas see if it, is anybody in the panel that wants to, I think that doesn't work. So. Yes, the, the answer is as I said, each chapter is responding to the local community that the chapter itself represents. And I can confirm that uh, today, internet is the network, the mother of all the networks, or whatever you want to define it. But uh, today, more and more, the attention is on the content, for example, that is not strictly something <laughs> is not the network, but is uh, the content conveyed through the network that creates a lot of problem. Let's think to the spam or other uh, kind of uh, uh, pathologies of the use of the network by the community. So each chapter is confronted to a, a number of different uh, problems, including content, uh, including uh, uh, po political issues, and also the relation with the governments and with the um, regulatory uh, in the country. So this is, uh, as I said, uh, act locally and represent what the community in the, in, in the country represented or in the region represented things about uh, how the internet evolves and how should be improved the, the validity for the society in the country. Thank you. Uh, the, uh, uh, if the issues are local, they should be dealt with locally, and the chapters are in the best position to identify those uh, issues and needs and, and act appropriately. Stefano said it well. How about you, Sebastian, will you say? Okay, I, 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 any more questions? Oh, I have, there's one question back there. We take that one first. Thank yeah. you. Uh, my name is Satya Raya from uh, Switzerland, running an IPv6 project. Actually, I did not hear much uh, from the speakers about the IPv6, though ISOC, there is IETF and ICANN, they're always supporting or uh, recommending many times uh, how to define, design the future internet. So I would like to hear the, from the panelists, what do they think of IPv6 evolution or revolution that should take place particularly in the developing world? Thank you. So IPv6 uh, is a very complex uh, uh, problem. 
And uh, what we are trying to do is, first of all, to verify if in the country there is a, a real problem already uh, concerning the availability of IPv4. Then a second thing that the chapters encourage to do is uh, also to um, to make uh, a, an evaluation of the situation in the country and to, to, make, to monitor, for example, uh, the organizations uh, or state administration or research uh, centers or um, um, industries and private sector, those that are already uh, have the dual stack in order to verify uh, what is the status right now. Certainly we are worried of the fact that uh, the projection for uh, consumption of IPv4 is uh, in two years from now, maximum three years. Um, and then you know that there is also the, uh, this uh, uh, idea of the secondary market uh, uh, for distributing IPv4 after the exhaustion in the present uh, registries. So we monitor the situation. We try to sensitize also the government in order to, to be more proactive than they are uh, just now. But uh, we have to, to verify that uh, uh, this uh, uh, transition to IPv6 is something that uh, is uh, governed uh, by the rules of the market. So uh, it is a, a joint effort that should be done also to convince the private sector to invest. So this is just <laughs> what we are trying to do in Italy. Okay. You, uh, Ecuador, do you want to say something on IPv6? Well, uh, Stefano said it very well, IPv6 and V4. V4 will, will exist for 20 years. You will, you will have IPv4 for a very, very long time. And as the internet grows, mobile networks and things, if you want to have a peer-to-peer -peer model, model, you have to use IPv6 addresses. That, that, that is just what it takes. Okay, we have one question at the far back there, sir. And I am also the president of cyberlaws.net. My specific query, what are your global programs and policies uh, or initiatives that you have specifically pertaining to uh, cyber legal challenges that developing countries are facing? Do you have any such uh, programs in place? Because I think a large number of developing countries are still groping in the dark in terms of getting more thought leadership, in terms of more inputs on cyber law, cyber crime, and related issues. Is, is a couple of examples. Okay. Anybody else? Oh. I have uh, the wherewithal to come across with the latest trends on cyber law jurisprudence. So, a large number of company, uh, countries are still now beginning to think in terms of laws uh, enabling e-commerce. Let me take an example. India has had a terror attack. A terror attack has got a cyber element in this. So cyber terrorism is a big problem. So is spam and information security. These are areas that developing countries are looking for help from outside. And and I think these are fund fundamental, uh, fundamental platforms to which, uh, if appropriate programs or assistance is given, the developing countries can leapfrog the, the cycle of development. So any thought processes, any initiatives in that direction, George? Well, uh, I think what you're talking about are, are programs that are substantially larger in scope uh, than than uh, than an NGO, than a typical NGO can uh, handle. Now, I know of uh, one uh, one such project in, in my previous employer, Internews uh, Network, uh, where uh, the, the, the organization was funded by a bilateral aid agency to set up a forensic lab in Indonesia and get some uh, experience. And uh, this, this took a year, two years. It was a significant project. Uh, I know that uh, in the United States, the Department of Justice uh, does a lot of uh, uh, workshops in developing countries, specifically because it's in the U.S. interest as well as in the developing country's interest. Uh, to understand what's going on and to be able to uh, to have defenses uh, against bad behavior and be able to prosecute bad behavior, but this is uh, uh, I, I think an area which you uh, you rightly point out as important. And developing countries are looking for leadership. I don't think we're doing it in a coordinated way, but my guess is that there are a bunch of uh, bilateral and maybe even some multilateral initiatives in this direction, although I'm not aware of them. Yeah, Stefano. 
Yes, uh, let me add that uh, in my slides I tried to say that uh, we uh, try to transmit to the local chapter the overall view. So we are very sympathetic with what you are presenting right now. But, and then also I sure that uh, we want to get contact with uh, other organizations like, for example, ICANN. And uh, within ICANN there is a security and stability uh, committee that is uh, very active in this uh, uh, frame you are mentioning, especially for protecting the root service system and the registries. But uh, uh, being involved uh, in uh, European project, I could say that uh, in Europe there is uh, also a strong attention through a group that is called the High Level Group on Internet Governance uh, that is dealing of problems connected to security and to how to protect from attacks and so on. So. Uh, these activities that are performed uh, to, to assure the robustness <laughs> and the, of, of the network are activities that also are in the direction of uh, uh, promoting the situation in developing countries. And uh, we, if we uh, compare with some cases that uh, um, happened also in Europe, but when the cable was cut in Alexandria, uh, the, all the community was affected, uh, including India, uh, then uh, 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 the community is trying globally to uh, try to be protected from this and from uh, uh, attacks that are made for, let's say, for political reasons. We uh, faced uh, a number of events, even in Europe, uh, the attack on Estonia, a, a sort of cyber war in Georgia. And uh, so uh, there are a number of situations that we study and we want to, um, to try to find ways how to be more and more protected in order to assure that a country could never be cut off from the internet. So this is uh, uh, not an activity performed inside uh, the Italian chapter, for example, but uh, as I said, we try to keep connection of, with, with all these groups and security is one of the major a major and important issues in the internet. Security, trust, and uh, things connected to that. Thank you, Stefano. Which will be on cyber security and uh, cyber uh, crime. Uh, but I'd like, to, um, I, I'd like to make you sleep a little bit less certainly tonight by, by an observation. Uh, and that is uh, when Ron Noble, who is the uh, Director General of, uh, of um, Interpol, was interviewed on a popular program on US television, 60 Minutes. This was several years ago. Uh, at one point, he broke down crying. Uh, and he said, uh, I know that there are going to be terrorist attacks, and I don't have the wherewithal to stop them. And uh, this is an extraordinary event. You can see this on YouTube. You can search for it and, and observe it. And uh, my question there is, um, is our public policy, are our priorities in terms of setting public policy correct? If the director of Interpol, uh, it, presumably he's telling the truth, uh, has to report such a thing. And, and uh, this is one of the agencies that really ought to be concerned and is concerned with cybercrime, uh, but um, don't have, they don't have the resources to, to do what needs to be done, as well as the resources to educate and spread the information as you, as you ask. Okay, more questions? I think there was one there that I cut off. You were to make your second one. The, hello. The, the, my other part of the question was, the, gradually there is a tendency to, on the part of content producer or technology producer, to make out an incremental change and claim the intellectual property right under that. that you, you see the earliest version and next version, there will be hardly any incremental change. So are you doing that? What should be the minimum patentable event or minimum patentable innovation that should be gone or should be considered that as an independent patentable item? Are we doing anything on those lines? Okay. Question, independent from, from who? You mentioned, okay, can, can you try to summarize the question? The, 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 um, uh, uh, the problem is, we are, 
gradually are facing is that the, the content producer or I, what I'm hearing is you, you see a tension between uh, incremental changes which undercut more fundamental changes in technology. Am I understanding you correctly? Correct, sir. What I'm, uh, I wanted to convey is that the, the service pro technology producers all throughout the world carry out very incremental or nominal change over existing technology, which is already prevailing or in a operational. And yet they claim on the basis of that incremental technology or incremental uh, sort of uh, improvement as a separate patent on that. As a result, the patentable event is becoming fragmented and fragmented over a period of time. So are you doing certain things like that? There should be minimum this much value addition or this much upgradation or incremental value addition over earlier patent, then and then only it will be considered as the independent patentable item or patentable technology or patentable product. Concern about pa the patentability of small change and the difficulty of, uh, of working within an environment in which uh, technological patents have become very numerous and, uh, and, and block uh, other, other directions of progress. Uh, I wish I could comment more on this. I know that uh, patenting uh, has, has become a big thing in the United States. States, uh, patents, some patents are uh, just absolutely ridiculous, uh, and uh, uh, nevertheless, uh, they are uh, um, they, they tend to be a hindrance to progress uh, more than more than a help. Um, I can't comment further without just interjecting personal opinion, and I'm not sure that's what you want. Do you have anything, Stefano, on patent pa software patents? What, uh, what, what I can comment yeah, that in, in the, only, the only thing I could add is that there is a strong uh, favor of the community for open standards and uh, for uh, free software and so on. So this is uh, one of the points that is uh, on, on top of the uh, opinion of, of a large uh, uh, fraction of the, of the community, at least uh, in Italy. And uh, so, if you want, in some countries there is a, a, a position against uh, patenting the software. <laughs> I, can, I can say for Sweden that um, uh, we see more and more use of uh, uh, open software. Uh, Microsoft has a challenge uh, when it comes to Word and the most uh, common software. And uh, I think Holland the country of Holland is uh, uh, using more open software than, than we do. So there is a trend in Europe that uh, people would like to use more open source software. And that has to come with licenses and, and patent questions and you cannot copy and all that and make software more spread and, and uh, the quality uh, also uh, could be supported and used by open software. That's, that's my view. Okay, oh, one more question. Uh, I think we heard from the presentation and from the discussions uh, that uh, the chapters, <coughs> the chapters uh, got involved very early in the process of internet. Some of them are from 95, the ours are from 97, and Stefano I think is older than we are. And we got involved when the internet was new, it was an academic network and all that. And then it transferred over to to the to 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 um, industry and got public and used. So to be a chapter is kind of living with the internet and helping government and, and enterprise to understand what it is, education and, and making the policy. That that was one of the themes that that we sort of uh, tried to give to you. The, the second thing was also that we urge you to get involved with the chapters in your countries. And if you don't find a chapter, it is very easy to, to build one. You, if you go to, uh, uh, to isoc.org, you see how you do this. And as I said in my speech, it takes just 25 people buying the, writing the bylaw and sending them to ISOC, and then you're in the process. Uh, the second we heard was that <coughs> we are looking at the future now. 
In Sweden, we look at the 2015. Some people are talking about 2020. And it is important to manage the internet from user point of view and try to foster the network so our children uh, get the network that is good for them. So they don't get abused by the network. They understand if they put a picture on the network, it's there forever. So they, you as adults have to teach uh, your youngsters that, that what you know as being uh, older than they are, they might think that that's no problem to, to issue my picture on the internet. It's just cool to show my, my colleagues. But it is some danger out there, and you have to help them out. And the kids are going to get know very much technically and, and can finger and type very quickly. But, but you are the ones that have the, the sense and, and the, the uh, uh, you know, you can, you can put the attitude that what you can do and what you not can do in the internet. That's what we also have covered. And then when, when uh, George talked about uh, Bulgaria, that you can also go up a level. You can work with the government. If you see that government is doing something that you don't think is logical or reasonable in, in economic type terms, you should get involved. And if you get involved with the government, it pays off at the end. You get uh, contacts and you get questions, you get invited and you will respond on certain policies that they come out. In our country, when the government is going to put out a new law or new policy, they send out these notes to everybody to, to comment on. So we comment on uh, every, every uh, third month, there is a note that we work in our chapter and we send into the government what we think about electronic uh, commerce, what we think about electronic identification, and so on and so forth. So, so they are listening to what we are saying all the time, and it, we are counted as, as, as anybody else. Also, that internet is multi-stakeholder. That if you are a business or a government or researcher, you should not say, no, it's not for us. It, it, it's for you. It is for everybody. So you should try to find colleagues and then start working and impose your ideas on the internet. The internet needs that. They are the billion we, they t we talked about today. There are people that hasn't used the internet before that going to use it. It will take a year or two before this billion has come, but, but you are the ones that knows more of internet than the billion that doesn't do that. So that was, that was the end of, of uh, the conclusion, and uh, it's been very interesting for us, for Europe and from, from uh, um, South America, to, as chapter, to, to show what we are doing, what we have done, and what our projections are. And if you just take notes on the web pages and the email addresses on here, you can mail me or my colleagues, or you can look into the internet uh, home pages that we have, or take a brochure that is over there, uh, one of uh, that that explains how you built your internet further. So we are very happy to to be here and and talk to you, and I hope you found our presentation useful for your way of building your internet for the future. Thank you very much. Thank you.